Could you give us the could you give us the spiritual clap, Lisa? Hi guys, and welcome to Geek Talk, where we talk deep and geek about keyboards, synthesizers, and music production. And my special guest, once again, Mr. Gareth Jones. Here I am. Gareth, thanks again for uh, having us. My pleasure, um, thanks for coming. It's, we've really enjoyed the first, if you guys watched the first uh, interview, we talked about Gareth's Electrogenetic album, out on September the 18th. Definitely check it out. Now, I've since then had a chance to sit in Gareth's sweet spot and for the, for those of you who think it I'm being perverted in the sweet spot in audio engineering basically just means the the equal the help me out here the equal in the middle of the speaker in the middle of the speaker <laughs> dead center and it was just really great as I say because I've been listening to Gareth's album over the last couple of weeks and getting into it for this interview and to actually sit on his chair and and hear the way he hears it. it it was just absolutely mind-blowing so thank you for that yeah i'm glad you enjoyed it i want to just talk to you about a few of the geeky stuff yeah, the of geeks course. out there that's why I we're see, here <laughs> i see you're a logic man i'm a big logic fan yeah thank you and i uh, i just want to say to all the guys there who keep trying to put me onto ableton and things like that well i do love <laughs> live as well <laughs> okay i use ableton live in my collaborative projects okay because it's a language that i speak uh, jointly with some of my friends, my friend Chris in uh, Naus Alpha Project speaks Pro Tools and Ableton, uh, okay. so it's a common language where we use Ableton. Mm. And Nick Hook is also a Pro Tools and Ableton guy. Oh, I see. So in the work I do with Nick, we use Ableton as well. Mm. But I kind of had a I go way back with Logic and Creator, way back to Atari days. Back to eMagic. Yeah, days, yeah, yeah, man. Before it became uh, on Mac. And, yeah, 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 Atari yeah. MIDI yeah, only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I got a long relationship with the company. Mm. I'm a huge fan anyway. I've got a current great relationship with Apple and some of the team in Cupertino. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, at the start of this album, it was, suddenly, it was clear to me that I was going to create it in Logic for what sure, it's worth. Sure. I mean, it, as I said all along, it doesn't really matter. Yes. But yes, it, yes. somehow it does matter as well. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I, I think this is something I got from uh, Dave Bascombe as well. Was um, I, I find it's usually usually the, the, the novices or as people who are not on your level, we, we kind of get fixated on the gear. And, and people like you usually say, it's not about the gear, it's about... You know, you the artist, and yeah, and um, I think doors. I think uh, we're in a position now where most doors will do the job. It's just they're all amazing. They're all so amazing. It really. It's a, a, just a connection thing. But for, but, uh, and I have a deep connection with Logic, mm. and I'm delighted. And I, all, all my commissioned work is done in Logic. Really, mm. when all my commission mixing, mm. I take files and I build Logic sessions. So I'm very comfortable, and I, I love it. It's kind of, I remember when Logic Logic became known as the Pro Tools killer at one point because it really was you could do everything on it that you could do on Pro Tools and uh, and like you say they they all do everything now. This is true. They're all this amazing. Is you this know, is true. So well, coming back to your Electrogenetic album, as I say, just sitting here listening to it was absolutely um, amazing. Um, we're going to sort of do a studio tour now, just now, guys, and I'm going to bring in uh, Simon Forsyth, who's hiding in the back there. And um, I'm, Hi, going Simon. To, <laughs> I'm going to get Simon actually to ask the questions on the modulars, because although I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff, um, I think it's fair to give someone uh, like Simon the, the platform because he's got the in-depth geeky knowledge on that. But before we get on to that, Gareth, yeah. I just want to ask you, listening to your album once again, which is out on September the 18th, buy it. It's fucking brilliant. Thank you, Vaughan. Um, we'll take that tenor later. <laughs> but um, so, something Simon also talked about was is, is the seamlessness. As I talked about on the other, on the upper, uh, on our previous interview, it, it's very organic sounding, although it's electronic. And it's this kind of seamless blending with the sort of found sounds and the modular sounds. And um, how did you achieve that? Is that a stupid question or <laughs> is it just what you do? It's, it's what I do. It's just yeah, what I you mean, do. you know, it's, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's uh, everything I do now is a result of like 50 years working with, you know, it's mm. a, if, I, if it takes me five minutes, it's taken me 50 years plus five minutes mm. to do. So I've got a kind of approach to sound and yeah. um, how I personally work. Uh, and so it just, hey man, it just turned out like that. Well, it, it, it's just also interesting because guys, while I was sitting here listening to it, Gareth was standing at the back listening to it and I asked Gareth, I said, 
um, you know, what are you hearing? And he said, no, he likes it. And, and the reason I asked you that question was because we as artists, we can't let things go. You seem to have made peace with, um, uh, maybe I should ask the question this way. Did you, were you at a point in your career where you suffered from that? Oh, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. How do you know when, like when you can let something go? Because art is never finished. It's only abandoned. How do you know when you're at that point where you can abandon it? Well, um, <laughs> uh, when, it, when, it, when it was mastered. I I, suppose, okay, well, that's a one, good... When yeah. it was ready to master. That's right. Or yeah. even before when I shared the private SoundCloud link with you guys. At that point, I'm, I, I'm done. So you've I, let it go, I, yeah. You know, there, there are many great gurus who are hugely inspirational about us. Steve Jobs said famously, uh, real artists ship uh, as regards software. Okay. Real artists, you have to get it out there. Yes. You know, you have, yes. to, you have to get it. And, yeah. and that, uh, hey, it's taken me a very long time, Vaughan. Mm. You know, I can't like sit on some pedestal and go, I know how to do it. It took me 40 years of not finishing stuff to get to this point now. And really it was inspired by my collaborative work with... Well, all the many great artists I worked with over the years, but also the original work that I've done with Spiritual Friendship right. and with Naos Alpha, where we just finished stuff, where we stopped judging. Uh, we, we said our job is not to judge ourselves. Our job is to make music. And, and, uh, and I was able to bring that forward into doing a solo project and say, well, at some point, hey, it took me a year. Mm. I mean, I didn't work every day, all day on it, but it took me a year before I got to the point where I said, you know what? Here, I'm ready to share this. It is very difficult when you are doing your own project and um, as a lot of you guys in the community are, are you know, self-producing yourself, it's very difficult when you are the artist and the producer it's to very sort difficult, of change yeah. hats and to sort yeah. of detach from that yeah. process. My only, I mean, for what it's worth, I, my advice about this, and I've underlined it a bit before and I underline it again now, is to really, our job is not to judge it. Our job is to make it. And, and of course we make critical decisions all the time and we edit and we review and we go back. But the, our job is to silence the critic, the inner critic, make stuff. Many times I'm, I make stuff and I think it's shit. And then the next day I think, oh, it's not too bad. And the day after that I think, oh, actually... I could play that to my mates. Yeah, yeah. And two days later, I think, actually, I'm that. pretty pleased with this. Okay. And it's the same. I've had the experience. I'm a, I am love doing like watercolours. Mm. I'm a like, very uh, enthusiastic amateur watercolourist. And it's not representational. Again, it's more abstract what I do. It happens exactly the same. I spend a couple of hours doing watercolours. I think it's all rubbish. Yeah. And in the past, I would have thrown it away. And now, the next day I look at it, I think, oh, that's not too bad. Mm. And the d two days later, I'm like, I really love that one. Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's, I, I don't find my inner critic helpful. Yeah. That's, I have to silence my inner critic. And I think that's good advice for all, all, all our friends and your followers. Uh, thank you. I, I you think know. that's, uh, yeah, you, I, I've often said that um, uh, logic is the enemy of creativity. Because, you know, it's like, this is why in the good old days, let's say, the Pesh come into the studio, here's the album. They put it together and you are left to with Daniel to balance it and everything. They've done their part. You've done your part. But it's very difficult when you're doing everything, you know, because you, you've got because the engineer, although the engineer, well, it's, it's just a different flow. Yeah, it's it, just it, it, yeah, it is the criticism. It's, it's more difficult because. Yeah, because if I'm working with a friend, hmm. when I work with Nick making spiritual friendship, I don't want Nick to get bored. And he I doesn't see. want me to get bored. Oh, so we don't sit there chin scratching. Okay. We get on with it. Because okay. our time's precious. He lives in America. I yeah, live yeah, here. Yeah. We've only got a few days together. We need to get shit sure, done. Sure. Obviously, when you're on your own, you can be. You, we can be our own worst critic. Okay, well, let's just get onto the back onto the album. You've used a lot of modulars. And um, what would you say is the percentage of this is, is modulars? And, and how much of it is VST or plugins or samples? Or well, there's loads of... There's, loads of plugins used in the mixing process hmm. uh, because it's mixed in hybrid it's mixed in logic and through this stream through this tube summing mixer okay this analog eq and this awesome uh, compressor okay. i've got a, like a, a mixing chain that i used oh, I to mix the album uh, so it gets touched by tubes and transistors and analog compression plugins in the mixing virtual mixing consoles in here as much as I want, really. Mm -hmm. Like many people in yeah. my world, I got millions of plugins. But uh, but most of the 
uh, the, the create the writing of is, the sound the creation yeah. of the sound is made with my modular rig um uh, there's uh, some voice uh, this uh, J JX3P is used on the album and um, one of the big sounds on the album the is the sample piano yeah. yes tell us the piano that. has a history uh, it's the piano I played as a kid in my from my mum's living room uh, about 10 years ago I visited my mum and the, I knew the piano wasn't going to stay there very long and I took a little Roland handheld recorder oh. and I multi sampled the piano I played every note loud medium and soft and with the pedal on and off and I took a big multi sample of the piano it was horrifically out of tune and then some years later I tuned each note as best I could wow. and finished up with a very personal piano sound so for me. So that is the sound of that so it's not, we naturally assume it was a plug-in or a... No no a, it's a sample me. piano yeah. that I built myself. That's amazing. From the piano that I played over 50 years ago wow in my mum's living room so that's like a huge like piece of temporal connection going on uh, obviously it's got some reverb on it yeah. at times uh, I lo I'm a you massive reverb, fan of yeah. the uh, eventide black hole yeah. pedals at home actually now yeah. but um, uh, so uh, and a lot of the piano was tracked with the reverb on it oh, uh, I uh, so I committed to the sound as I played it oh, okay. um, so the, that's a big part that the, but it's a homemade sample piano so that's a big part of it. And otherwise, really, it's the core make noise stuff. It's a couple of Moog modules I've got that are super important for the bottom end. Absolutely. Um, and um, I don't know what else I use now, unless I were to look through the individual sessions. Well, I think this this goes nicely into the sort of mini studio tour we're going to do is now. So we, I'm going to get up. We're going to do the camera on hands free. And we're okay. going to just look at some of your pieces of gear, and you can talk us through it. And then Simon's going to ask you some questions on the modulus. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Right, Gareth, we are here uh, at a different and the hands view camera and we're going to just do a little mini studio tour for the uh, for the viewers here. Yeah. To start off over here, you've got a JX3P and this featured quite you use this a lot on your A little bit. Yeah, I mean it's my it's a uh, my only polyphonic keyboard. Uh uh you know, apart from the Access which hasn't got a keyboard, the virus. Uh, so, yeah, that's a friend of mine gave me that. I love that. I love the control. I love this digitally controlled analog, I think. Sweet sound. It's what I have. So that got used. Uh, speakers everywhere, as you can see. Very important. Those those monitors of yours are amazing. Could you tell us what they are? Barefoots. And they are legendary monitors. Much loved in the audio, pro audio community. Yeah. Uh, very coherent, very tuneful bass end. It's not just not just sub. It's sub with notes. Yes, just like super important and high resolution for me. I like them. I use a Sonarworks plugin actually to uh, compensate for the room. I saw there's the a bit of a dip in this room. Oh, right. Sonarworks changed my life with the bass end. I saw the so really recommended. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did see this. I saw the Sonar works on your master bus there, and as there and I was going, I was going to ask you. I see. Oh, there's the preset. Oh, there's a, look uh, at the difference. Look at the, that suck out in uh, the room. That's uh, minus sixty B at ninety hertz. Wow. So before I had the Sonar works, I was tending to put way too much ninety hertz oh, on, and and uh, because I wasn't hearing it. And not enough in the, you know, anyway, the inverse of that curve. So, so no, it's has been great for me. It's a poor man's uh, Trinov. The Trinov is the state of the art one, but so no, it's is the ah. poor man's Trinov. I highly recommend it. Okay, well, that's great. Okay, well, let's look, let's look at your control console over there, uh, Gareth. What Behringer. Is... I had a bit of a breakthrough with Behringer because uh, I, I, I was at Guitar Center and they gave me a voucher and I bought the Behringer Model D which I thought sounded really great. This is not for the Moog Instagram feed. Yeah, no, of course but, not. And I was really impressed by it. And uh, Behringer used to be crap, in my humble opinion, uh, but they seem to be now pretty awesome. And mm. after my good experience with the Model D, which I really enjoy the sound of, great bottom end, I needed uh, my Mac, my old Mackie controllers wore out. And I looked at different options. The Mackie was quite expensive. I thought I'd try the Behringer. And it's turned out really good. It's very compact. 
It's got nice colours on it. It fits nicely under my monitors. I love the faders, you see, because I'm old school. So I've, yeah. I spent so many years on big consoles. Uh, I hands on, so yeah. I find faders really creative and useful. Well, I used to work in a, a turnkey Soho Sound, as you'd know the place many years okay. ago. I used to yeah. be the salesman and in the, in the buyer. And I, I know that Behringer had a lot of product uh, problems back in those days. Well, they were the very cheap bottom were, end yeah, of the market. Yeah, and they're so. still super affordable. Mm -hmm. But this is it's quality shit, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's right. It was the Midas team that came in and changed everything, I think. Mm, mm. Uh, especially, uh, especially probably with this controller. Anyway, that is a great controller for me. Mm. Con con controllers aren't for everyone. This is great too, the, so the SoftTube uh, uh, Console 1, I think it's called. Console 1, yeah. Okay. This comes with software as well. And this, uh, the, the basic configuration emulates a channel strip on a SSL console. It does, yes. So I really like that. Again, hands-on, because the thing for me with hands-on is I can turn more than one knob at once, which I really like. With a mouse, I can only adjust one parameter at and a time. And that was a question, Gareth. Um, I know, I know um, a lot of people are in the box these days. And when I interviewed um, Mesh, the band Mesh, you, yeah. you produced their... No, I mixed a record with them. Oh, you, you mixed it? Yeah, I did yeah. produce oh, you it. Yeah. Did, okay, it was the Week of Light 2006 album. And I remember Rich Silverthorne saying, this was 2006, he was amazed, I think they met you at a hotel room or something, he said he was amazed when, he, when you came in, they met you, and he said, where's all your gear? Because I think this was, uh, I think you were one of those forerunners that went into the box very, uh, okay, in the box is very popular these days. Yeah, of course. But yeah. in the, he was amazed at the time to see, like, where's all your gear? You were yeah. doing it all on a G4 Mac at the yeah. time. But the question I'm asking is because you're sort of old school, that is why you do like, obviously, having the hands-on control, hence the controllers yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's part of my history. Yes. And, and it's not only... It's, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of new school uh, 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 musicians and producers who love all the faders as well. Yes. But, but it's, it's kind of deep in my DNA, I suppose. I think it's just nice I to have a more hands-on feel. Let's look around what you've got here. I see you've got a, a Revox. Do you ever... Was this album... This no, one, this album, I, I, I didn't go have the Revox. Tape. No, I thought about putting it on tape. I, I had this uh, beautiful Stellavox. Um, uh, I was... The bottom end was really important to me on the album, the super low subs, and mm. I was uh, I got it to a point that I was delighted with it, mm. and I ran out of time and energy to pursue it further with tape. I the see. bottom end on the Revox is incredible, mm. but this album didn't go to tape. The next album might. I don't know. Well, I'm pleased to hear there's going to be a next album, <laughs> so that's very <laughs> okay, good to hear. Yeah. Well, let's I'm just pleased as well. <laughs> God willing, if God wills it. Boy. <laughs> Gareth, you look, you're, you're, look, you're looking great, man. I'm sure we're going to get another 50 years out of you, so yeah, don't yeah, you sure, worry. Yeah. Okay, so let's walk down this. Uh, uh, this is a tube. Um, this is the Thermonic Culture Fat Busted. Yeah. It's a, a, a tube a summing mixer. Yes. It's very simple, 14 into 2. Lovely overdrive on this knob. Uh, saturation, I suppose we should call it. Yeah. Pull tech style EQ. Oh, great, yeah. Um, and, and I can just split up my output into, into seven stereo stems, if you like. Okay. And I, I, I just love the sound of it. Ever mm. since I bought it, it's it's in use almost mm. all the time. So would you say, is this, is this like an integral part of your sound now? This It's an integral part of this album. Oh, okay. um, since I've Since Studio B started coming online at home, I'm mixing more out of outputs one and two only for compatibility oh. between... If, if I'm out of outputs one and two, I can just open it up at home because I've got... Uh, I'm a big fan of the UAD plugins. I've got the 16 cores of UAD in that Mac, oh, and yes. I've got eight core at home. So the, the the sessions move between Studio A and Studio B gotcha. easily, but I haven't got a fat bustard at home. But still, this album's all about going through the tubes and the clarifonic EQ. This is a genius EQ that does only high only treble basically so uh but it's got a lovely smooth sound i like it a lot it's strapped to my mix bus all the time and then relatively new for me uh, but used all over this album again that the eq goes into the uh tweakers this these amazing kush compressors that have lovely saturation and color uh so that's just stayed uh, that stayed off for the whole chain. Everything got mixed through that chain. I think uh, I think there are a lot of in the box emulations, but I think there's a lot to be said for having the you know the sort of like the organic or don't say it, it's not the organic, but the sort of 
the, the sound that these things give you that plugins probably can't. You know, well, there's a richness. Yeah, so. m- I, maybe there's so many people do great. It's just fun, man. It's fun. It's, it's just the, fun, it's like we were saying about vinyl before. It's, it's a beautiful way to do it. Mm. Like recording to tape might not sound better. Mm. These metric halo, I use metric halo audio interfaces. I've got a lot in here. I think I got five, and they are they sound absolutely great, and I really enjoy using them. But there's something really fun about recording to tape as well. So it's if it's fun, it's a good vibe, you know. That's so. true. And we also also in a lot of the debates we have about analog versus digital plugins versus hardware. I think it's just as we'll talk about when we get to the modulars now. It's they just inspire you to work in a different way. Yeah, That's I'm a hybrid you, guy. Yeah, very much. I'm very comfortable. Uh, with digital and 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 I'm very I love working with analog, you know. Mm. But the modular is was is has been a huge part of my musical development. It is through the modular that I've been able to create finished pieces that I feel willing to share with you guys, mm. uh, because uh, so it ha- so that's been really really important to me personally. Rediscovering modern neuro rack modular has catapulted me into being a published artist okay. so that has to be said you know although i'm although it's all cool you know without the modular this record wouldn't exist brilliant well as i said this brings us uh, right into the the modular section here and i'm going to now bring simon in to ask the questions regarding the modulars so simon here you go So, Gareth, thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Simon, for that little bit of modular tour. As I say, Simon's definitely the uh, the guy to talk talk about things like that. But you seem uh, it, it it's always great to see two sort of like super geeks geeking out about things like that. I hope we didn't get too overexcited. We didn't embarrass ourselves. Well, that is why I've separate this my channel into a <laughs> piano keyboard and a geek talk session. Good so idea. It's just, people it's, know it's, what they're getting. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. people do know what they're getting. Yeah, okay. Triangle in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> talk, yeah. <laughs> Um, I just want to ask you about the strong room because you did move this. This is your room. This was your original room and you've got it back again because you did move out here at one point and you did more remote mixing. Is that right? Yeah, I got this room. I moved back from Berlin in 92. Yeah. They were building these rooms and this room was built for me. <coughs> um, and I was here for many years. It's a great community, uh, creative community, technical community, amazing studios. And at one point, I think about 2006, uh, it it started to f- the rent went up quite a lot. It started to feel painful to me, oh so I tried something different. Um, I worked out of my house, and then I had a very portable setup. It wasn't that portable? With an assistant, I could set up different white spaces for different projects, depending on. And then, I don't know. A few years ago, I needed a space. I rented an office at the end of this warehouse for a couple of months. And in that period, this room became available and the studio manager at the time, Phil, still referred to it as my room. He said, Gareth, your room has become available. And it seemed like a, and I bought actually some monitors in here and had a listen to it and decided really if I wanted to move back in. This artwork that I had commissioned, I had in storage at the time. Uh, so I got the artwork out of storage and put it back up on the walls. And I felt... I'm, I'm very much enjoying being here. It's a very dynamic, thriving, creative, artistic, musical community. And there's a bar. What more and do you want? A, you know, and I, I, when I came in, I said, to, I said to Simon, God, this is one hell of a man cave. But then I thought, no, this isn't actually a man cave. There's something quite spiritual about this. You know, it's you've got a really, uh, yeah, as I say, just, just the way it's done. It, you've got a really good vibe going here. And the sound is good in here and everything. And, I think geeky, speaking geek, geekily, if there is such a word, there's no such thing as a perfect sounding room. That's something else for the community, yeah, because people are always trying to look for the, the, the perfect sound in a room. And even a room like this, which is better than most people could work in, you use something like the Sonarworks plug-in just to... Yeah, I mean, this yeah. Is, it's a joke, this room. It's six metres by three metres by two metres, which is yeah. all wrong. Yeah. Because the, 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 the numbers go divide into each other, really. Mm. So, it's, I mean, hey, it's a wonderful creative space, and I've made some great records and done some amazing music with very talented people in this room. But, but acoustically, it's shit. <laughs> it is but, really about but, understanding the room, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I uh, Sonarworks is corrected. 
for me and headphones are a great part of my life and so on but and i've got many different monitors but th yeah there are a lot better there are some rooms even in this complex that, that are acoustically far better but they're way bigger and they're way more expensive you know so it's everything's compromised you know we could, if we had a half a million budget, we could build a really nice sounding room. Sure, we can. Yeah. Should we start a crowdfunder? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's your plan for me later, right? Well, uh, after we'll, I bought we'll, the yacht, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have a chat. And, and but, actually, there was going. No, we're gonna have a chat. But there was something um, I was gonna. I was asking Matt, and at the end of the Dave Bascom interview, because I like to always give my um, people I'm interviewing a, a gift. And I asked Matt, I said, and I know Bascom, I gave him a bottle of Shivers Regal. And I was speaking to Matt. I said, what does Gareth drink? He says, I don't know. We only drink tea together. So I got Lloyd and I had every, a few people in the group trying to find out what, what you drink because we wanted to buy you That's a nice. little. But we couldn't find anything. So, and, 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 you know, it's terrible if you give someone a bottle of booze and they go, oh, I don't drink, you know, yeah. I can't drink. So, yeah. so I understand we wanted to buy you a gift. So maybe we could take you for a beer sometime or something. I understand you you like brew, a brew dog. You're a beer drinker. I enjoy a craft uh, beer. Okay. So yeah, he, sure. okay. So Which well we, done, can, we can conveniently get one after the interview. Absolutely. Well, strong we, bar. I think what we'll do is, um, we've got some, uh, things to discuss with, uh, Gareth and, uh, we'll definitely, I'm, I'm sure we can definitely get the beers. Gareth, I just want to say thank you so much. This has been an absolute honor and a dream come true, not only for me and my community. And um, I wish you all the best with this album. As I say, I'm going to be plugging it and posting it wherever I can. Thank you very much, and, Vaughan. It's been a yeah, great pleasure yeah, yeah. having you all here in my room. Ed. I've enjoyed chatting. Absolutely. So, guys, Gareth Jones, I will be putting links to all the, the album and all the things we've spoken about in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Adios.